What's up YouTube, Demi here with another video for you guys. This is a overall view on how to make currency in Path of Exile and how to have fun doing it. The main thing that I recommend you do when you're looking for a way to make currency in this game is to find something that you personally enjoy doing. Because to make money in this game, you're gonna have to do that same thing hundreds if not thousands of times. So for like, for example, I really like farming Uberlab for a couple different reasons. The main reason is the uh, chests at the end give you a bunch of different loot. They give you like corrupted items, quality gems, sacrifice fragments, they give you the offering back occasionally, you can get corrupted six link, high amounts of divination. And then the enchantments on top of that means that like, if you're spending four or five chaos per offering, you're generally going to pick that up doing like minimum key runs, like three key runs. If you get a good day with like six key runs, five or six key runs, you make a lot more currency. You can also, like, do the uh, labyrinth chest. There's a labyrinth chest that gives you a guaranteed lab-specific unique. I believe which there are four, but the highest value one is Death's Doors, which are these boots exactly right here, actually. And these are usually worth, I would say, they're like 3x plus, I think, right now. Yeah, they're around 3x to 4x, depending on the roll. And if you get a good enchant on them, such as Leech or Penetration or Attack and Cast Speed or Regen, it goes up exponentially. I think I sold a pen, 10% elemental pen if you haven't killed recently pair for 25x the other day. So like, if you get a death door, you can then just keep running it through Uberlab and get a couple more, or get a good enchant on it, and then the price of that item spikes exponentially. So that's one of my ways. I run Uberlab. The other option, uh, you can run Merciless Lab as well. It's decent income. It's not as good as Uberlab, but you don't have to pay keys. So if you don't have chaos to buy keys with, Start by running Merciless Lab, practicing it there, getting good at it, and then move your way up to the um, Uber Lab. Another way that a lot of people make currency at the start of new leagues, or even any time during a league, is running at Ziri. At Ziri is a boss, a map where that has too many bosses, then three mini bosses, then Queen at Ziri herself. And she drops at Ziri's Promise, which is a flask, usually a couple chaos, at the start of a league, and then there's like the uh, belt. Gives you some elemental damage, elemental leech. Wow, what's the third item? I don't know. And then there's also the Scepter. <laughs> Doriani's Catalyst, which is usually pretty expensive at the start of a league. They're, they're a high elemental damage Scepter. And those are great. That's another, like, option for you to make currency on. And you can also get the pieces out of for Uber and Ziri, which are right here. Oh, where they go? Sets. These pieces, those only come from doing normal at Ziri, so to get these, you have to run normal at Ziri, so it's profitable to farm either or. You can run Uber at Ziri for like at Ziri's Disfavor, at Ziri's Acuities, the uh, Sacrificial Garb, Unique Version, at Ziri's Splendor, or the Mask, all of which will sell for a fair amount at the beginning of a league, or at, like, later on in the league, basically the, uh, the, the Axe and the Gloves are the main value there. Um, you can run Guardians. For example, I have a ton of Guardian maps. You can do carry services for all of these things. You can set up service by, via forum thread or via public party in town. Just create a public party saying, like, running Guardian service, 10 chaos per run or whatever like that. Especially in leagues when there are, like, there's challenges to complete the Guardians, and a lot of players can't do that. So if you can do it comfortably, if they supply the map and you get the fee, then they're happy to run with you, and you get a fee for free, basically, and you get all the XP and maybe some of the loot. Like, it's totally up to you. When you're running Uberlab as well, you can do Uberlab carries, same process, you just create a public party that's like Uberlab, your offering, our loot, like shared loot, whatever. So they pay for the run, and then you get the loot, or you get the enchantment always, like stuff like that. It's a good option. Um, other options in this game, you can farm specific maps for types of like divination cards or currencies. I like to farm um, Hall of Grandmasters, because this map is the only map in the game that can drop the Immortal card and the... Uh, House of Mirrors card, which I don't, can't find my thing. So the House of Mirrors is literally a div card that gives you a mirror. The Immortal is the prerequisite to that. So you get 10 the Immortals, which gives you one House of Mirrors, and then you need, I believe, nine House of Mirrors to get a mirror. But you can literally farm a mirror by running Hall of Grandmasters without ever trading, which I think is incredibly awesome. The, um, the other things I get out of this map, I get a lot of T10, T11, T12 maps from the chest at the end. It's effectively like running Uberlab. You get a lot of sack fragments, a lot of um, maps, stuff like that. So I just run a ton of those. You can farm the other unique maps, like Poor Joys drops the Chaotic Disposition card, which is a one-set div card. You need one div card, it gives you five chaos. 
So you can buy these maps for like 10 chaos and you get a card or two back out of every map. I mean, you get the loot, you get your currency back and it gives a ton of XP. And the boss always drops like X amount of additional rares, things like that. You can run um, Care Blades. It's a guaranteed, it's a T10 map where the boss drops an additional four maps. So if you get plus ones out of those, you can get all of your uh, shaped strands or shaped spider forests, whatever. You have a ton of options there. Um, this is an example of another thing that I do. You can flip currency or items. I tend to flip mostly currency because it's a lot easier. You can automate it with PV Trade if you want a video guide for that. How to set up your shop and whatnot, it'll be linked in the description below. It's on the Demi Splains playlist. But like, basically you buy low, sell high. So in this case, I'm buying divines at 25 chaos per. I sell them at three to one X. So I'm paying 75 chaos right now for one exalt, which is around 90 chaos. So I'm making 15 chaos per trade. I can also just turn around and sell these for chaos for like 28 or 29 or so right now. So I'm making a couple chaos per trade. I do this across every single currency. <laughs> I'm not streaming. Um, other ways to make currency, you can just grind maps. Any map, doesn't matter what, but the more efficient you can run maps, the faster you run them, which means the more things that you kill, which means the more times you can roll that wheel of RNG, whatever you want to call it, you just roll the dice. The more times you roll the dice in this game, the better chances you have at making currency. So if you want to make a lot of currency, run a fuckload of maps. I primarily run strands and mesas right now because they are very like linear maps, and I can usually do strands in like a minute, minute and a half. Just need a moment which means that when it comes to my hourly income or hourly experience, I get a ton more than if I were um, running, say, a map every 10 minutes. Six maps versus 60 maps, it's 10 times the income, right? So it stacks up a lot faster. And your main income from running maps at this speed isn't the rares, it's not the items you pick up, it's the pure currency drops or like six sockets and map returns. So when I map, I map primarily to receive more maps so I don't run out. As long as I don't run out of maps, I can just keep mapping, which means everything else that I pick up becomes profit. And on a good day of mapping, for me, if I do, I would say 100 to 150 strands in a day, or like any other map, whatever, I'll make like 3 to 5x or more, depending on how lucky I am. If I pick up a couple raw exalts on top of everything, that's great, but like, usually you'll pick up 1000 plus jewelers and 6 sockets, you'll pick up a bunch of chaos, sextants, maps to f refill your map tab, chisels, volors, regrets, all of that sort of things. Any type of currency you pick up in this game, you can then convert into what other other, other currencies you need via PUE trade, or if you really hate yourself, you can attempt to use the uh, global trade jet. I highly recommend just using currency.pue trade. Makes it a lot easier. <laughs> Let's see what I picked up in that map. I didn't make much out of that map. I made a volor, <laughs> but like you can do those really fast. Um, other options in this game, you can do crafting. I have a metric shitload of crafting videos on my channel, but like basically the goal of crafting is to craft a good item that will sell for more than you invested into it. So in my case, whenever I do high tier maps, I pick up high level bases like I-84 pluses. These are all from like Shaper or Guardian maps or T-15 maps and like you pick up these items and you have a couple different ways to craft them. You can alt regal scour method until you get something that's really nice or you can just chaos spam them, or you can scour alk them, it doesn't matter. But if you get an item that's worth more than you put into it, you then just throw it in the for sale tab and sell that item for more. Once you get more currency, you convert that currency, that chaos, those exalts back into crafting materials, repeat this process forever. That's how I've made the majority of my currency in the past like two years or so since I started playing Path of Exile. It's just crafting stuff for sale. Usually I craft for self-improvements on my own gear, but if I create something that's too good to like re-roll, but not good enough for me to use, I'll just throw it in a tab. And somebody will generally buy it. And if it doesn't sell eventually, I'll just, I'll like, I'll throw it in a tab randomly. I'll probably check it relatively close to what I think it's worth, right? And then if it doesn't sell, I just lower the price until it sells. Like maybe every week or two, I'll dump the price on everything, depending on what it is. If it's like a really high value item and I know it's worth more, I'll just wait. The other thing to remember about selling items in this game is you cannot sell items if you're not online. So if you want to actually be able to sell stuff, try to just sit online even if you're not playing. And then um, if, if it's a high value item, the higher the value of the item, the longer it will take to sell, usually. Because not everyone's going to be able to just dump a couple hundred X every once in a while on like high end stuff, right? So you have to wait until somebody either is able to save up the currency for it or you're willing to barter out a trade for it. And for me, I always love like negotiating high value trades, especially like we traded recently I traded recently a Legacy Calm's Heart, which was worth around 500 exalts, 
for a mere coronal mall, like a, an original mirror level coronal mall, which is in my mirror thread link description below. But like, that was a really fun interaction. We talked about it for like, I don't know, two or three days before we actually decided to do it. And um, we both were very happy with our ends of the deal, so they might not be 100% exact but it's a trade, like, it's not currency, so I'm not spending currency, he's not spending currency. Need a map? Every, every party was happy with their end result, so, like, it's good for both of us, and we had fun doing it. Sorry, somebody followed me. Um, other options, you can farm divination cards. The uh, headhunter div card that's very popular to farm right now is the doctor. You can get these out of spider forest, and if you shape your spider forest, you can very easily sustain shape spider forest instead of, like, shape strand or any other T11, T10, right? So you just run these, all of these, all the time, and eventually, like, if, if the uh, members I was seeing in Legacy League, it was like, you get a Doctor card every 100 to 200 maps if you're very lucky. Sometimes it takes 300 plus, but, like, each one of those cards is worth 10 exalts. And that's a lot of money for a fucking div card. <laughs> like, you just, you just run the map, which is a T11 map, so, you, I mean, it's decent tier. You get good XP, good loot, good currency returns. But on top of that, you also have a chance to drop a very expensive div card. Which pays out very well. You, you'll you'll pay for the maps like just by running them. You'll get them enough returns to sustain, hopefully. And then if you get this on top of all of that, it's just a giant bonus to your income. Uh, what other random options are there? I guess that's I guess that's pretty much it. Basically, this game is by grinding gear games. So the thing you need to remember is that everything is a grind. The more time you spend, and the faster and more efficiently you spend your time the more currency that you will make out of it. So if you learned anything from this video, hit like, hit subscribe, leave a comment. Suggestions for the next video are always welcome. And um, check out my Twitch stream below. I stream all the time. I also have a Patreon if you really, really want to support the channel. It is linked in the description below as well. I appreciate any support that comes my way. Watching my videos is the number one way to support me, though. So thank you guys for watching, and that'll be Demi out. I'll see you in the next one.